Welcome back to Old War Stories with Uncle Jay. This one is called, Don't Say I Never Gave You Anything. At The Wiz, where I had worked back in the very late 90s to very, very early 2000s, we went through a number of different managers. And one day they got this manager, Scott Zieselman. Ooh. Scott was a very interesting individual. Scott was the meanest, nastiest guy ever. And we would have these smackdown meetings in the morning. They'd always have a morning meeting. And we'd get everybody over there at what they called center court. It's just this thing, like a register right where you walk in, like the main register. And there were telephones there to call throughout the store and other stuff. And there was supposed to be a manager hanging around, which sometimes there was, sometimes there wasn't, but whatever. So he'd stand in center court and address all of us standing there and give us these meetings. And I remember him calling us all rat bastards. There was a lot of what they called in retail shrink going on. Shrink is people stealing stuff. The inventory just shrinks because we don't have it anymore. There was a lot of shrink going on and the higher ups really, really, really let him have it. So he was letting us have it. And uh, he said, uh, we're, we're getting more security cameras and we're doing this and we're doing that. And uh, the other day we found this was stolen, and we found that was stolen, and and one of you did it, and he, he, you know, he'd like get in your face and shit. But Scott was also the most kind-hearted man. At the same time, it was really odd, and he could switch in an instant. This guy, really interesting. So he's given us a SmackDown meeting, and the phone rings, and the store's not open yet. So the only people that would really call, although it could be a customer, we'd pick up anyway. And we'd say, where's security? Are you open yet? No. You know, shit like that. So, But occasionally we had employees calling in, and they would be calling out for the day. So I think this guy, Anthony Bondi, Anthony Bondi was his name. I can't believe I just pulled that out of my ass. Anthony Bondi called up and said, Scott, now Scott's given us this SmackDown meeting. He picks up with security. Yeah, what's going on, Anthony? Yeah, I'm sick and whatever, uh, blah, blah, blah. And Scott didn't cause a scene or be a pain in the ass or anything like that. He just said, okay, feel better. And that was it. It was quick, easy, and painless to call out. I was kind of a goody two-shoes, and I'd go in even when I was sick and shit like that. Actually, I wasn't really getting sick much at the time. But anyways, uh, he would turn to the most kind-hearted guy ever. Scott was also diabetic. And we had there were two sides of the store there was the main section where they had the TVs and the VCRs and the stereos and speakers and uh, Walkmans and you name it all that stuff over there and then there was a the center section the music section and that sort of ran itself we sold music CDs and stuff like that like you would go to a store to buy a CD you know where people buy them online now or actually just download the mp3 but that was what was done back in the day and they sold tapes and vinyl and on the other side where I was was the computer section and there was a soda machine on each side there was one in the main section down in like the employee break room there and there was the one on our side and I don't know if it was a dollar dollar twenty five doesn't make a difference and Scott wandered over well, it so seems that the guy who would refill the soda machines... Now, the soda machines were... They were, like, leased or something. 
I don't know exactly how it works, but I guess a company that can supply the soda and that has the machines and they strike up a deal with the business and they say, okay, listen, we want to put a soda machine uh, here and we'll split some of the profits with you. And we had two soda machines. Well, the guy who would come to refill the soda machines was, I guess he was disgruntled. I really don't know. This was the old school soda machine and I haven't actually used one in a long time. <laughs> and they've changed since. But this is the one where you can't see inside the machine. It's just everything's in there. And it had a button for Coke and a button for Sprite and a button for Orange and a button for Dr. Pepper and a button for this and a button for that. And they had like maybe an iced tea and they had Diet Coke. And that's what Scott needed because he was diabetic. Well, the disgruntled dick who refilled the soda machine would just fucking put things anywhere. He didn't care. So it was truly pot luck of what soda you're going to get. If you hit Coke, you could get orange. If you hit Dr. Pepper, you might get Sprite. The next day, you might get Diet Coke. It was just whatever was next in the queue. The guy just threw shit in there and got the fuck out. And that was it. So anyway, he hit the button for Diet Coke, he grabbed the soda, not thinking, and he's walking and you kind of swing your arm and he looks and he's like, that's not Diet Coke. And he handed it to me, he says, I can't drink this because it's not diet. And he handed it to me and he says, don't say I never gave you nothing. <laughs> he also used that line one more time which was, uh, we had, we used to, I used to, early on, I used to be a cashier there. And when people would pay by credit card, they would hand us the card, we would swipe it. It wasn't, it's not like today where you had the pin pad that you'd either swipe or stick the thing in with the damn chip. And don't even fucking get me started on this chip bullshit, <clears throat> which is another story that goes right along with the auto stop starting cars today. Anyways, they would hand you the card and you would swipe it for them and then I would hang on to the card because we had an imprint machine cards have credit cards have raised numbers a lot of them today don't even have that anymore but what this thing was was this thing uh, from it was actually from American Express it was blue and had the American Express logo on it but you could put any credit card in it it had this little metal thing that you would stick that in, then you would put the receipt in there, and then behind all of it was a purple ink roller, and you'd slam it shut, so that would slam the credit card against the paper, against the roller, and it was motorized, the thing plugged in, and it would go, and it would pop open, and then you would have the imprint of the card numbers on the receipt, to prove that the card was in the store. And we also even checked signatures then. And if a card wasn't signed, we would have to ask them for ID. And, you know, it was serious business. So that was, I think, a lot more secure, at least back in the day, than a lot of other places where you would go in, they go and hand the card right back to you. Don't even have you sign shit. And I know they have like a $50 threshold nowadays, like some grocery stores I go to, if it's under fifty dollars, it's fine, and you don't have to sign. But other ones, you have to put the, um, uh, you know, it comes up with a thing, and you have to sign it. And yet, other stores like a five dollar purchase, and you got to sign. I don't charge no five dollar, like a fucking millennial. But anyway, you know, the, it, it's sometimes like pot luck, and that's after they got the damn chip that they read on the fucking thing. But anyway, these imprint machines were broken, dude. The plastic was cracked, they didn't work right, you had to slam it closed two, three times, and then it would imprint four times on the receipt, overwriting what it just did, because things would move, and it was just... So American Express sent us new imprint machines, and I remember he put one at the register I was on, and again said, don't say I never gave you nothing. And there's one more story with Scott, Getting back to when that Anthony Bondi character called in and Scott just turned into a real nice guy and then went back 
to colonless rat bastards. The uh, we were having another one of those SmackDown meetings, and Scott decided to be very blunt with us. He said, "A lot of you people, Bondy, you know, <laughs> call out." Oh, I'm really sick. I have the flu and I have 107 degree fever. And the next day, you come back to work and you've made a miraculous recovery. He said, I'm not going to tolerate that shit anymore. And he would curse at us, too. He said, I'm not going to tolerate that shit anymore. He said, Listen, if you want to call out for one day, it's a nice day. Maybe you want to go to the beach or something. Just call me up and say, Scott, I don't feel like coming to fuck into work. Okay, no problem. We'll see you. Take care. And that was the story. He was the most kind-hearted guy, but the meanest, nastiest, surliest motherfucker at the same time. A very interesting character. He also had one other line that he used. He said, my wife goes out shopping. She goes to seven different stores and comes home with one or two items maybe he said I don't do that I go buying if I'm going out I'm getting something and I'm bringing it home period um, and we need to turn the shoppers into buyers and trying to drive sales and shit like that interesting interesting character don't know whatever happened to him I think he was fired because they just decide that they have to change management from time to time and they did and then we got some other guy and anyway that's the end of the story so thank you very much for watching make sure you click like make sure you click subscribe and take care we'll see you next time bye bye